people and welcome to a very sunny Carlisle. So I've just got off the train, just going to make my way to uh, Carlisle city centre and we'll get this adventure started. The Cumbria way, yes! <laughs> so there it is, start finish of the Cumbria way. So we're at the start finish of the Cumbria way, 75-ish miles, 5-ish days. Let's get this adventure started. Come real way. Let's get going. So we're finally on the trail. Cumbria way, loving it. So we've just hit three mile. I didn't hang around in Carlisle for very long. I was actually there longer than I thought I'd be. I asked a woman to take my picture and she said I will if uh, I can take your blood pressure. It was one of those NHS free health check things like a porter cabin there. Apparently my blood pressure is just slightly, uh, slightly up. But then I said to her, I am feeling a little bit anxious. I've got 75 miles to walk. So wouldn't your blood pressure be up a little bit? She kind of agreed with me. But to cover herself, she advised to go and see my GP when I get back. I'm not worried about my blood pressure. But to be honest, I have felt a little bit anxious this morning. A little bit nervous, don't know why. It has been a bit of an adventure getting here on the trains and everything. But now I'm here. I'm on the trail, absolutely loving it, buzzing. Even the sun's come out. So yeah, I'm feeling absolutely great. Not seen any signs yet, or if uh, there has been, I've not noticed any. But I have seen a sign for Dalston, and that's our, gonna be our first stop. So we made it to Dalston, five miles in. Lovely little village got a co-op which is behind me just been in there for a drink there's a butty shop here called crumbs a pub a cafe yeah a few other bits and bobs there is a fair fish and chip shop but it's shut because it's only half past 11 so I'm just gonna chill out here for a bit top the town up on my legs and then we'll get going That's the lovely village of Dalston done. We're back on the trail. And I still haven't seen a Cumbria Way sign. But I have seen a few people on the Cumbria Way. Three in front of me and two behind me. So that's encouraging. The first Cumbria Way sign that I've seen and we must be eight mile in. I spy with my little eye the mountain range. Ooh, we're getting closer. So the section from Dalston to Colbeck is pretty much following the River Calgary. And some people say this section is a bit dull. And I guess if you've come the other way, through the Lake District, then this bit is a bit mundane. But on a day like today, I'm absolutely loving it. Nice leisurely walk, beautiful sunshine, 
Some people even miss this last section out. They finish at Colbeck. But then you haven't done the Cymru away, have you? So, we're just over 10 mile. I'm going to get to the Bell Bridge, which everyone seems to uh, photograph. And I'm going to stop there for uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And then we've got the last four and a bit miles into Colbeck. It's going quite well. No niggles yet. Although I'd be a bit worried if there was at this stage. Sun shining. What could you want? Perfect day on the Cumbria Way. <laughs> right, so this is Bell Bridge. It's uh, sadly got washed away during the uh, Storm Desmond in 2015-16. It had to be uh, completely rebuilt. A bit of information about it there. So. There's a lovely bench here, so I think I'm going to chill out here for 30 minutes and then we'll crack on to, uh, to Colbeck for the final leg. I was starting to nod off on that bench so I thought I'd better get moving. So if you're wondering how I got to Carlisle this morning, I left my house at five o'clock in the morning. I drove to Ulverston. I've parked the car up in Ulverston. There's a few streets there that don't have restrictions on and there's no houses, so you're not gonna be bothering anyone. I then caught the 7.30 train to Carlisle, but it doesn't go straight to Carlisle, it goes back to Lancaster and then you change at Lancaster to Carlisle. It got me in at 9.20 this morning into Carlisle. And then I made my way into the city centre, took a couple of pictures, had my blood pressure checked, you know, like you do. And then I got on the trail. So at the moment, it's four o'clock. So I've been walking for about six hours, but I have stopped for like 20, 30 minutes here and there. So we've got three and a half miles to go to Colbert. Can't wait to get the tent up and get the kettle on. I think I'm ended up in there. Uh, someone's house here. This is on the uh, on the map. Ah, it's down there. Next. Thought it was going to end up in someone's back garden then. So you go through a jungle a bit, and it brings you out onto a main road. Wonder how many people have gone through that gate and ended up in their back garden. Right, we're off the main road. Back down the lanes again. So I've just reached the bridleway is closed bit. I did know about this because it was posted on social media. It's a bit more clear on that one. So I presume the landslide is somewhere along here on the Cumbria Way, which they've highlighted in red. And then we've got to veer off up here. So we're here at the minute. So we're gonna follow it down and then follow this. And then it'll bring us back along here and down. Slight detour. So it looks like this is where the detour starts. So instead of going that way, we've got to go this way. Which is up there. So I'm gonna I'm guessing it'll take us up through the woods and then along the top. And in that direction I would guess. Right. Let's crack on. This is some detour this is. I've come up through two woods and two fields. My watch has actually bleeped at a thousand feet. I'm gonna be on eye pike at this rate. Completely bypass Colbeck. Back. I think it's leveling out a bit now. 
So the official path on the Cumbria Way is below that woodland down there where the trees are, sort of down. But this is sending us this way, across this field. I can see where people have been walking. So there's been a bit of footfall across here. But yeah, it isn't half uh, taking us around the houses, or the farms in this case. That three and a half miles to Colbeck's <laughs> gonna turn into about six at this rate. <laughs> oh well, it can't be helped. And at least the council have done something about it. And they put a diversion in place, even though it's uh, a bit long-winded. <laughs> I don't think we're that far now. So that, is High Pike, which is where I'll be tomorrow, and that village there is Colbeck, which is where I'm heading now. So it's just gone very black, and it started raining, and all these cows are in my way. Shouldn't be that far now. Why are they all looking at me? Nothing to see here, moo cows. Just a lonely walker. That's alright, just ignore me. Now they're following me. To uh, go over this style. There, you got bored with me now. See you, moo cows. They don't bother me a lot, but when there's a load of them and they all start following you, I know they're bored, so you walk through a field and they're like, oh, what's this? And they start following you to see what you are and what's going on. But when there's a lot of them like that. Oh, it's stopped raining now. Cool. So I'm just taking shelter in this woodland. It's actually hailstony. It was glorious sunshine before. What is going on with the weather at the moment? Ah, oh, bloody hell. We finally made it to Colbert Camping. <laughs> A little bit sodden. Right, let's get this tent sorted. Try and get dried off. Right, we're all pitched up for the night. £7.50 per person, cash only. So I've just been in our day and a really nice hot shower, which was quite refreshing. We got changed. Stats wise today we did bang on 15 mile, so that diversion didn't actually put any more miles on. It did feel like it had put another mile on, but it hadn't. So I'm just going to nip into the village to Oddfellows. I'm going to get myself a burger, I think, and a, and a couple of pints. And then I'm going to get back here and get in my sleeping bag and uh, get some shut eye, I think, because it has been a, a really long day. So I shall see you all tomorrow 
for day two of the Cumbria Way. Morning, welcome to day two. So that's us leaving Colbert Camping. Just going to go through the village and then we'll be leaving Colbeck and heading on up to High Pike which is the highest point of the walk and it's the only Wainwright on the walk you bagging uh, you bagging Wainwright so I'm a bit late it's uh, it's just gone nine o'clock I've had <laughs> a complete disaster this morning I put uh, my trail runners on and one of the souls decided to park company so scratch my head don't know what to do the nearest shop is Keswick which is uh, quite a way away the next bus to Keswick is Saturday it's now Tuesday so I spoke to this campsite owner and very kindly she's lent me a pair of boots that are Rissons well she's donated them a pair of Solomons that actually fit me perfectly <laughs> disaster averted so we're getting to Keswick I know there's a few shops there and uh, maybe pick up some trail runners or just see how we get on in these boots but yeah <laughs> you can't make it up these things are uh, sent to test us so right gonna make my way out of the village and we'll start heading on up to High Pike That was a nice steady pull out of uh, Colbeck. Mainly road walking, but you do go through a couple of little fields. So I'm just starting the ascent now up to High Pike. My route today is going to be 21 and a half miles, so it's my longest day. Um, my plan is to get to High Pike, Lingy Hut, probably stop there for a bit, and then make my way down to Skiddaw House. I might call in there if I can. It's always usually locked up every time I go past it drop down into Keswick, pick up some supplies, might even have a look at some trail runners. Um, and then I'm going to follow the River Derwent all the way around. And I'm planning to stop and stay at uh, Hallows Farm campsite. So yeah, 21 and a half miles today. So it's going to be a biggie. But the sun's come out. There's hardly any wind. So it should be a nice day. Let's hope it doesn't hailstone again. What was all that about? Right, first port of call. High pike. High Pike Summit, the highest point on the Cumbria Way, 658 metres, and the only Wainwright on the walk. So there's, I've just got in the wind shelter, it's, uh, the wind's picked up as I've got higher, and it's a really bitterly cold wind. So um, I'm just going to stay here for a few minutes and then uh, drop down to Lindy Hut. But yeah, it's chilly up here. But views to die for. Stunning. But yeah, as soon as you stand up, you're getting that wind bitterly cold on your hands. Right, five minutes here. I'm going to crack on to Lingy Hut.
So the last time I was on High Pike Summit was just over four years ago and I was actually walking the Cumbria Way. I have actually done this walk before. I did it with a good pal of mine and his son. And to say the weather was horrendous is a bit of an understatement. It didn't rain, it lashed it down. What should have been streams was raging rivers. A lot of the rivers had burst the banks. It was just awful. And we'd only just come out of the first pandemic lockdown. So we couldn't just go into a pub and have a meal because we hadn't reserved a table. Face masks had just become the new norm. So whenever we went in a shop, we had to wear a face mask. And it just didn't turn out to be the walk that I was hoping it was going to be. So I've always said to myself, I'm gonna do the walk again. But this time, I'll do it the other direction from Carlisle to Ulverston. So I'm back here again, doing it again. And obviously solo this time. We're still good pals, we haven't fallen out. He's just working. I'm sure he'd, uh, he'd love to be here with us back on the old Cumbria way. So yeah, some bits of it I remember quite vividly and some bits of it I don't. Um, but yeah, I suppose it was four and a bit years ago now. But yeah, I am loving it and it is bringing back some nice-ish memories. <laughs> The only boffy on the Cumbria way. Been here quite a few times. I've never stayed here, but I have visited it quite a few times. Looks like it's had a coat of paint since I was here last. And I did hear that the door got damaged. Apparently, a quad bike ran into it. So, yeah, you can see where that's been repaired. Cracking view out the window, though. That's not a bad view. I'm just gonna take on some water and then we'll get going. Let's get our house next. So we're just leaving uh, Lingy Hut and the official Cumbria Way follows here and then it drops down, follows like a stream and it's very muddy and the path disappears in places. But the way I'm gonna go it's just straight down from Lingy Hut, straight down to the bottom where the mining works are. And both paths bring you out of the same place. But this is a lot better path. So that's the way we're going to go. So the path I've just come down, you can just see Lingy Hut there. It's a tiny little dot. And I've just come straight all the way down. The official path follow this river it goes all the way up to there and then you go across but that path half of it's missing and it's very muddy and boggy the way I've come a lot simpler and then it just brings you down to the mining works so I've just hit six mile still got 15 and a half to go which is more than I actually did all day yesterday. Uh, still loving it though, and still smiling. It's that lovely sheepfold there. I know you can get two tents in it because that's where we actually wild camped last time. Wainwright actually mentions them in his book. Apparently there's six of them in the area and they were all built by one man. But yeah, you can definitely get two tents in the middle of it. So 
So I finally got to pop into Skiddo House, a brew and a biscuit for a quid. Can't complain. Look at the view from the front door. Wow. There were some people in there, so I couldn't really film. Right, let's get back on the trail. Let's get cracking. I feel like my energy levels have uh, totally been recharged after popping into Skiddo House. It's amazing what a Mr. Kipling's apple pie and a cup of coffee can do. Bit of sugar, bit of caffeine. So I've just hit the uh, 11 mile mark, so 10 miles to go. Derwent water's just coming to view, but we've still got to go all the way around it. And the campsite, right at the end. So I've just gone through Latrig car park. It's all downhill into Keswick now. Woohoo! Right, so we've arrived in Keswick. I'm just going to go in the uh, co-op shop behind me, get a few supplies and then I'm going to go in one shoe shop but I know which one to go in and then see if I can get some trail runners sorted out and then get back on the trail Right, so we're leaving Keswick Stop there for about half an hour, 40 minutes about a sandwich, something to drink and Picked up a new pair of trail runners. I know, shouldn't wear new shoes on a hike. Not really got much choice. They feel mega comfy and they were in the sale. So I've got about six miles to go. Estimating around seven o'clock I'll be at the campsite. So let's get on and get there. Dermot Water. That's a beautiful sight, it's a welcoming sight as well, two and a half miles to go, we're nearly there. So if you're wondering what happened to the boots, I left them in the shop where I bought my new trail runs from. The lady said she'd kindly dispose of them. They've done me proud, those boots, today. Despite having no grip and a hole in the right one, they've got me to Keswick. And I'm really grateful for Colbert Camping for donating them to me. They really have they saved the trip today. So the new ones seem to be okay. No problems yet. And I've only got 1.6 miles to go, so we're nearly there. So I've got pitched up at Hallows Farm, £10 a night per person if you're doing the Cumbria Way or if you're just backpacking and you drop in. There's always plenty of room for uh, little tents and stuff here. There's only actually me and another guy. He's at the other end in a family sized tent. Up there and over the other side is actually High Spy. So, uh, if you're doing the Wainwrights, you'd probably be able to work out where the campsite is. So, stats wise, today I actually did more than what, uh, what was plotted. So, I actually did 23.36 miles. Um, I did go wrong a few times earlier on in the day. And obviously wandering around Keswick so uh, yeah that's probably added a few uh, few miles on and stuff so I'm just gonna chill out just made myself a brew a uh, bit of a latte with some sugar 
picked up some pasta and that in, in the co-op jockey bar and I've got one of those apple crunch dried meals I might have that as well but I'm also I thought I'd treat myself I'm going to have a hot chocolate options one <laughs> you can call it a treat so tomorrow I've got less of a day pretty much by half um, 13 miles tomorrow so it should be an easier day but I am going over State Pass so from Borrowdale Valley to the Langdale Valley and then my plan is to camp at Bayes Brown campsite so uh, yeah tomorrow weather wise it's meant to be uh, the better of the days and then I think Thursday it's looking like rain and then Friday it's definitely raining so yeah it could be a wet, uh, a wet soggy finish so right, I'm just going to chill out, have some food, enjoy the rest of the evening, and I'll see you all tomorrow on day three of the Cumbria Way.